<laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Pentiment, the medieval murder mystery. So last time, we effectively just set up our character. We established what kind of a person our guy, Andreas Mahler, is. We've established that he is a bookworm, a theologically inclined bookworm as such. He is a specialist, as, uh, he specializes in logic, he is a logician, and he has a penchant for dabbling in the occult, or at least researching it from a, from a safe, non-heretical uh, distance, of course. Um, also, last episode, we had uh, quite the long talk with the Baron, uh, I believe it's the Baron in these parts, uh, Lawrence, uh, what's his name, Lawrence Ruthfogel, and uh, yeah, he seems like a pretty aff- amiable fellow. Amicable fellow, he seems a uh, pretty good peoples, but we have been faffing about enough. We need to kind of, we kind of need to get to work now. So we're going to be going into the abbey and starting work. Uh, that's the shrine. That's the convent garden. I'm sure we'll come there in a moment. We should probably check out where it is that we're going to be working here in the church. So let's get to it. One of the things we also need to do as part our mission, uh, as part our main quest objectives. Is to is to find out if we can get an advance on the taxes, on our salary for the uh, gurnauts. Singing, how cool is that? I don't want to interrupt him. All right, I'm not going to interrupt him there because that just sounded awesome. Let's go to the aquarium. Okay, so what is this here? Aquarium, cloister. Okay, we could have gotten to the cloister from the other direction, of course. This is the chapter house, the infirmary, the upper abbey, uh, the monastery aquarium, the large garden. Where are we going here? Courtyard and lavatorium, refectory. Hello there, Seb Hat. God give you health, Master Mela. Brother Sevat, I am surprised to see you still here. As am I, but I will be leaving soon and returning to Rome. Okay, so we keep getting these prompts here. Uh, no, that's not what I want. Uh, I and Bishop, I and my Bishop regret that we could not reciprocate Father Rudolph's generosity earlier. He showed much kindness to our priests at the Council of Constance many, many years ago. All right, come on, that has to be a. There we are, that's what I was looking for. Okay, so I was seeing it kind of uh, gives us a little prompt there. So the Council of Constance, meeting of bishops that took place between 1414 and 1418 in the Diocese of Constance to end the Papal Schism. It was also notable for the condemnation and capture of the Bohemian theologian Jan Hus. Alright, that is educational. Will you remain in Rome? That is up to my bishop, but I will miss these mountains in any case. You should travel to Ethiopia, Master Mela, and see the highlands. God has blessed my home with a wondrous beauty. I would love to, someday. I still need to return to Nuremberg and open my workshop. Yes, someday. Until then, if you are ever in Rome, I may still be around. I've only made it as far as Florence, but I'd like to see Rome. This, of course, we see the little symbol there... Um, that, I think, is a reference to our the, the past that we have chosen. So we, we indicated that we have traveled to, to the it, Italy. Uh, by the way, if you have some time in the next few days, it would be nice to share a meal with you and some of the townsfolk. The townsfolk? I am accustomed to strange looks, especially in rural places like these, but I have had kind words with the baker and his wife. Oh yes, the Albans, Ulrich and Gret. I offered to tell a story to the children and their mothers over a meal someday. Gret seemed excited about the idea, but I would be more comfortable if you were there as well. Uh, I can certainly make time. Do you not eat here with the brothers? I mean, that, that, that sounds nice. Come on, let's be nice. Thank you, Andreas. I look forward to it. God give you health. Yeah, that's, that's kind of nice of us. Let's back to the church. Okay, where's the scriptorium? There's the dormitory. The cemetery, definitely not there. Kitchen and Keller. Uh, let's pop in here. The refectory. Uh, Lucas? What's going on, Lucas? Hello, Andreas. 
How goes it in the kitchen? Is Brother uh, Voslav working you hard? Not too bad. Brother Voslav is nice to me. Uh, voice, voice love. Voice love. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to learn about the pronunciations, guys. It's Father Abbott and Brother Pryor who make things hard. How so? I wouldn't complain. They just like their food a certain way, and I'm not that good at cooking yet. I'm sure Brother Vostov will teach you well in time. Brother Idok complains about his food too, but he complains to Brother Voistrok. Voislav. Uh, what does Brother Idok know about food anyway? He's from Cornwall. <laughs> that's, that's great. I don't even know where that is. It's a land to the west, across the sea, where all they eat is fish. That's great. Sounds miserable. But that's always what the, but that's always what he complains about the fish. He just likes to complain, I think. Don't lose heart, brother Lucas. You're still learning. Thanks. See you later, Andreas. Until later. Okay, that's pretty cool. So we learned what Lucas is up to there. Uh, that's the garden. We've got to find out. I'm thinking maybe we should be going upstairs. Uh, so this is Volslav. Uh, voice Volslav. Do we pronounce it, pronounce it Voshlav? Please comment in the comments, guys. Uh, morning, Andreas. How's living with the Gert Gertners? Uh, it's great, they're a lovely family. Good, we get along well enough. Well, it's a room in a pleasant home, so I can't expect much. It's great, yeah, they're a lovely family. Family. Clara is a good woman, and she looks after Big York and Eva like they were her own. They're both almost fully grown. True. I suppose it's less that they need looking after more than she cares to. Uh, little Ursula is in good hands. Anyway, if I don't see you around the Abbey later, maybe I'll see you in Tassing tomorrow. Until then. Okay. Yeah, we should uh, we should stop faffing about and find our way to the scriptorium, I think. So, let us head back. Refectory? It would be in the cloisters, wouldn't it? Into the dormitory? To the church. Um, I don't really know where I'm going, so aquarium. This leads back to the church. Okay, I think we're gonna have to cloister the crypt, the tower, dormitory. No, old Bailey. Math oh, there's Matthew. Actually, should we have a word with Matthew? We need to talk to Matthew about the taxes for the Gertner, so let's do that. God bless you, Andreas. Why is he so small? Is that right? How is the sacristy today, Matthew? Same as yesterday. Does my vocation seem silly to you, Master, Ma Master Mailer? Absolutely not. Uh, of course. So this here is uh, referencing our theological background. No, I was just being friendly, a little. Let's go with absolutely not. Even though I did not complete my theological studies, I understand the importance of the sacrist. Okay, this probably endeared us to him a bit. Your understanding is appreciated. The treasures of the Abbey remain secure. Thank you for your inquiry. God be with you. One more thing. I have a favor to ask. Yeah, let's do it. Yes, Andreas? I was hoping you could give me my pay for the latest manuscript early. Should we do that? This isn't part of the agreement you made with Father Gano. You'll be paid on the completion of each additional manuscript you illuminate, not before. I only have a few pages left, Brother Matthew. I'll finish them in the next few days anyway. Can't you make an exception this once? Hmm... Is he likely to make an exception? Uh, should we go with this one? Then I think you can wait if, ugh, to collect your wages. This abbey runs through mutual agreements, not haphazard payments. Breaking such contracts would cause undue trouble, not only for Kirso, but for Tassing as well. Is that why Father Abbott has increased the taxes on the Gertners? What is this about, Andreas? The Gertners have asked me to pay their rent early so they can pay their taxes to the Abbey. I mean, that's good. I would like to help the Gertners pay their taxes to the Abbey. 
I need the money, brother. I've made a grave error and I'm in debt. If I had the coin, I'd be able to pay it off. I I mean, well, these two are accurate. The Gertners have asked me for their rent early. Or I would like to help the Gertners pay their taxes. What? Uh, I mean, these are ba effectively the same, aren't they? Let's go with this one. I see. Very well. Do not ask this of me again, Ma Andreas Mela. Here you are. I shall note this with Father Gernot and pra uh, Prayer Ferenc. Thank you, Brother Matthew. Hmm. God bless you, Andreas. Oh, sweet! Alright, that worked. Convince Matthew. Uh, Alright, now that I've got my payment, I can give Clara the rent early. Sweet! I'll give it to her directly and make sure she receives it. I'll put it on the table in the evening to surprise them. Uh, I'll give it to her directly, I think. Okay, so, now that that's done, let us uh, get to work. Uh, in the sacristy? Well, uh, no, not the sacristy. Uh, doing? Doing? Stay away from the sacristy. You know you're not allowed in there. Uh, I just wanted to admire all the sacred objects used during Mass. Should, I mean, should be? Okay, let's, let's try it. Then come to Mass. <laughs> of course, my apologies. Thank you, Master Mela. Okay, so we're not allowed in the sacristy. We've learned that. Ooh, what's this here? Something to investigate. So we're in the crypt. A lovely relief of the Virgin and Child. Shame it's hidden down here. That was it. Have we unlocked something that we... Now what? Oh! Hmm, a secret entrance to the library. I'll have to remember this. A sec I'll have to remember this. What? Oh. Okay, so it doesn't... Hmm. It doesn't let us go to the library that way. That's interesting. Alright, I wonder if I should have... Foundations of Abbey were built when the Romans occupied this land not long after the death of Christ. So this abbey's old. Alright, so we're still looking for how to get to the library. Dormitory, Old Bailey, Sacristy. Scriptorium, there we go. Okay. So we're out in the garden here, near the Old Bailey. And it looks like this is... Not, not the Old Bailey, but Old Bailey. And it looks like this is where we come to do our work. So there's Piero. Uh, there's Adoc. There's Guy. Gui. Uh, Alright. Let's have a word with these guys. Andreas, God bless you. So good to see you. Good morning, Brother Piero. Good to see you as well. I don't like this weather. My bones ache. It means a storm is coming. Big Yor Gertner says that if you live here 10 or 15 years, you can smell storms coming. Brother Adok has been here long enough that we can always smell him coming. Do not forget, Brother Gui. Should, we, should it be Guy or Gui? I'm going to go with Gui. Uh, the fate of the youths who, yeared, uh, who jeered the aged prophet Elisha outside of Bethel? Mauled by bears, weren't they? Indeed. She-bears. Are you comparing yourself to a prophet, Brother Adok? I'm comparing you to an impudent youth whom the Lord, in his ineffable wisdom, may choose to strike down. Brother Gui, please show more respect to Brother Adok. You're being mean-spirited. Calm yourself, Brother Adok. You're too sensitive to Gui's jokes. Yeah, let's calm everyone. This will be remembered. I am old, Andreas. Every slide against me stings with the fire of a thousand wasps. But I will pray to God for the strength to endure this wickedness. Well, everyone seems quite lively. I suppose that means Prior Fer Ferenc is overseeing us today. He was here, but then he heard Lawrence Rothvogel has arrived and he hurried out like a m little mouse. Ferenc is so desperate to impress the abbot and nobles like Rothvogel, it's pathetic. You feign kindness to Father Abbot and our prior only to speak about them like this behind their backs? It's shameful. Oh, oh no, Brother uh, Baron Rothvogel, his manuscript. 
Oh, 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 so he's upset. I just realized that he will want to see his manuscript. How silly of me. Of course, that's why, he's, that's why he is visiting. Yeah, you better get to it. Perhaps if you were younger and faster, you wouldn't need to worry so much about patrons' visits. What's the problem? The Baron is just one client. He has to wait like anyone else. Gui, someday you will stand where Piero, where Piero is, and a young monk will stand where you are now. That, okay, that's his, um... Hmm... Yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's balance it out. Hmm. Anyway, what's the problem? The Baron is just one client. He has to wait like anyone else. Andreas, Baron Rothvogel is not like anyone else. He has powerful friends, including the Prince Bishop of Freising. Kirsa was already out of favor. Father Abbot does not want to have to deal with more attention. Well, if Prior Ferenc isn't here... I'm going to welcome my manuscript until he arrives. Oh, that's right. I need to reference the In Der Mauer manuscript. Okay, so this is the work that they do then. Zdena. What do you want, Andreas? A book. The In Der Mauer manuscript. The Book of Hours. Your hair looks messy today. Did you get enough sleep? Uh, what do you mean? I mean, did you sleep alone or... Oh. Why do you want to know? It would be nice to have something to think about during divine reading. Okay, Zdena. What do we know about Zdena? Uh, have you considered the Lord? You really are a cloud on a sunny day, Andreas. Could I just get the book? Ugh, that's all that way upstairs. Can't you get it? Can't you get by without it? I'm sorry, but I really can't. I need to reference it for my work. Uh, really? My feet hurt, and the stairs are so steep. I'm just going to ask Illuminati, Ill, uh, Illuminata to get it. Sister Illuminata. <laughs> Andreas, uh, Andreas needs a book and he's being inappropriate with me. <laughs> what? Andreas? Sister Illuminata, I'd like to borrow the In Der Mauer manuscript, the Book of Hours. Uh, I wasn't being inappropriate with her. Yes, I overheard. Here, please return it promptly. Okay. Damn these nuns. Andreas, may I see how your masterpiece is coming? Of course, your opinion is always welcome. Oh man, that looks pretty cool. Yes, the composition is lovely. There is a joyful spirit in your arrangement of the figures. Yeah, that's pretty cool. The contrast of colors is also quite nice. Rich and beautiful on their own, but not overpowering the scene. Hmm, is that all? It doesn't feel right. I don't know why. It's an excellent interpretation of someone else's work. What do you mean? It's all my work. My son, you're copying the illustration from the Inde Mao manuscript almost exactly. So, what's wrong with that? Haven't I improved on it? Aesthetically, yes. It's wonderful. But I feel you have not given much thought to what it represents. It's November. In November, we show peasants leading the pigs into the forest to forage on acorns before the slaughter. Andreas, the peasants here are no longer allowed to forage acorns in the forest. Many great lords and abbots across the empire have forbidden it, even Father Gerno. What difference does it make? This is the way November is painted. But it is not the way November is. Hang on, was that a... I'm going to have to remember to uh, to look at the glossary when the, when the blue things come up. Art is illusion, storytelling, but in their most sublime form, these images illuminate a path to truth. It's most important to me that my clients are happy. They won't pay me for truth. Yes, but with God's grace, this book of ours will outlive us all. 
Book of Hours, a type of illuminated manuscript that contains an abbreviated form of the prayers of the Divine Office in addition to other religious texts. Most are relatively plain, but wealthy patrons often commission lavish examples with elaborate illustrations. Okay. What will it say to those who see it in a future generation, centuries beyond, beyond our comprehension? Some will gaze deep into your lines and paint to seek a deeper meaning. What will they find? But you need not listen to my opinions. They are just the thoughts of one old monk. There is no place for the monastic scriptoria anymore. In truth, this room is a place out of time. Uh, does that make you sad? Why is that? Why has Kirisov kept this up for so long? Some people, some places, have a difficult time letting go of the past. I am not among them. The creation of books, of art, is no longer the province of monasteries. So be it. More people will be able to write, more will be able to read, and in doing so, be brought to truth. Don't you think there's a danger in anyone being able to write? Anyone being able to read anything? I think there will always be a place for artists like you. I, I'm, I'm gonna go with this here. I think there will always be a place for artists like you and Brother Idok. Gui. <laughs> and Brother Gui. It's kind of you to say so, Andreas, but you need not be concerned for me. I have lived a long life, and I am happy to have served the Lord. When he calls for me, I am ready. This is pretty cool. This, this, I'm picking up a lot of, um... The Name of the Rose vibes from this here. The Name of the Rose, of course, the uh, brilliant murder mystery by Umberto Eco. Set within uh, a monastery as well, I think. But I think much earlier in time. I think during the, during the 1200s or something. Ah. Uh, where has the time gone? It is already ter- a uh, Terk? Terche? Monastic hour corresponding to 9 a.m. One of the little hours of prayer. Ter- Terke? Uh, precedes mass in the chapter meeting. I'm guessing we're not going to mass? Too much talk. I must ask forgiveness for not honoring the rule. Man, what's the rule? The rule of St. Benedict of Nursia is a book of instructions for monks living together under the guidance of an abbot. Written in the 6th century, the rule provides the principles for living a monastic life. Okay. Until later, Andreas. Until later. God damn, we've, we've learned a lot of stuff here, guys. All right. What? Oh no! He spilled the paint. Hello. Hello. What was that? What's going on in here? All right, well, hang on a second. I've just got to see who was who was that? That was uh, that was Prior Ferenc. What's he doing? Responsible for running the scriptorium. So known for his interest in esoteric books. Okay, so was he up to some shady business? Let's go take a look. All right, it doesn't. We can't interact with anything there. Hmm. Let's go talk to Illuminata. Andreas, what was that noise? Oh, sorry, Sister Illuminata. I knocked a bowl of paint to the floor. But then Prior Ferenc came in, wrote in one of his books, uh, wrote in one of his books, slammed it closed and left. He was in such a hurry, I don't think he even noticed me. He was slamming books shut? Prior Ferenc should know better than that. Some of these manuscripts are quite delicate. I fully agree. Delicate or not, all books should be treated with the utmost care. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm with that. Many, uh, many contain precious wisdom that can aid even the unenlightened in growing closer to God. They should be protected and cared for. I'm totally with you. Which is why books should not be taken out of the library unless it is necessary for divine reading or the work in the scriptorium. Uh, are you still mad at me for borrowing the Chronica, the Chronica Clara? Or... The Clear Chronicle, a history of the universe from the creation to 1082, written by the Irish monk Mariana Sco Scotus. Uh, oh, that reminds me, there are a few more books I've been wanting to borrow. No, anger is not an appropriate response for a nun. But the fact remains that you tricked me into giving you that book for no valid reason. No, not valid? Uh, it's not valid to want to see the works of the great Irish scribes? 
one who wrote masterworks that even now grace libraries at Cologne, Fulda, and Mainz? No, it's not. Not unless it pertains to your work or the abbot permits it. Okay, so she's a bit of a stickler for the rules. Now, if you'll excuse me... Wait, what's all this fuss about Lorenz Rothvogel? Why is Prior Ferenc so nervous? Lorenz? I didn't know you were familiar enough with the man to use his Christian name. Anyway, I haven't dealt with him personally, but the Prior and Father about Abbot have. I only know that he's purchased a number of our most valuable manuscripts over the years. And he paid enough to help the Abbey when we needed it. Like what? What did he buy? Mm, I can't remember. You know, I have my own responsibilities to attend to. How about this, Andreas? If you help me recover some missing books, I'll tell you what I know about the Baron. Of course, I'll help in any way. Uh, I was hoping to work on my masterpiece, but I suppose I can help. Yeah, come on, let's be nice. This will be remembered. Thank you. It's for the good of the Abbey. Where should I begin? Out there, where you and your cohort were carelessly strewn books around the scriptorium. I will tell you what books I'm looking for. Find them and return them to me. The first books are two volumes of the Aeneid. The Aeneid, of course, being uh, by Virgil. Reddish covers, 14 inches by 10 inches, 3 inches thick. Innsbruck inches or Nuremberg inches? Oh, I know the ones. They're amongst Piero's favorite. He keeps them by my desk. That must be it. They are not in his keep. Okay. Is this it? There's a fair amount of wear on these. I hope you don't mind. Uh, is this... And... Is this the Ionian? Yeah, this must be it. Those volumes were old even when Piero started to make his copies. Yeah, this is it. Of course, that's his uh, Aeneas. And is that Dido? And of course, then they fall in love, and then when he, he, he tricks her and leaves her, and she sets herself on fire, that's curious. How long ago was that? Three years. The Aeneid is not one of my favorite stories, but I understand why it appeals to Piero. Oh, I love that. She's inserted herself in the text. This is great. Aeneas chose his duty to the gods over his lover, Dido. Do you think Aeneas' sense of duty appeals to Piero? We all have our vocations. Brother Piero takes his more seriously than most of the others in this abbey. You clearly take your chosen vocation seriously. Andreas, I don't have a choice in my vocation. Few women do. Well, surely it's not that dire. True, but that doesn't mean women can't take pride in their vocations. I mean, that's pretty good. Is it really that bad? In The City of Ladies, Christian de Pizan defended women of all classes by showing their value to society. Uh, Christine de Pizan, one of the most renowned female authors of the Western Europe. Christine was a court writer for three dukes. She is well known for the Book of the City of Ladies and the Treasure of the City of Ladies, works that defended women and offered advice to women in all backgrounds. Pretty cool. I'm going to have to look at that. An admirable effort. But even if we do exactly as we are told, we are portrayed as vehicles of sin. That is, uh, that is true. Temptress and seduct- uh, temptresses- temptresses- uh, temptresses and sedu uh, seducers by virtue of our sex, even when men are the aggressors. Even in the Abbey, we must travel in pairs, lest we tempt the brothers or others. And here, in these pages, Virgil cuts Dido as Aeneas' as seducer, though it was the gods that thrust her into his arms. Like Dido, we, are, we ordinary women are merely tools in the tales of men. We can never be the protagonists of our own stories. No woman is exempt from that, from the empress to a nun. It is our lot. I suppose I understand now why you are not fond of the Aeneid. It's fine poetry, for men. Now, the books, if you please. Damn, I, uh, I kind of, I kind of get what she's saying. Thank you. Next, Wretched Gurin. This is a printed copy, green cover, diamond pattern. Wretched Gurin? An Italian chivalric romance written by Andrea de Barberino in the early 15th century. 
the titular character rises from impoverished origins to go on heroic adventures and discovers his noble parentage. Originally published as a manuscript, it enjoys greater success as a printed book. Okay. A green cover, diamond pattern. We can do that. I do not have the size in the ledger, but hopefully the description is enough. I know the one you're talking about, brother. Uh, I, brother Idok was reading it. Okay. Let us... Here we go. The beauty of this book truly belies its ridiculous content. I'm surprised the Abbey owns a copy. We don't. It belongs to Amadea Rusco of Lugano. It's a Venetian edition that's quite valuable. He loaned it to us five years ago. It was subsequently lost, and the abbot has received three letters about it. That's great. I've certainly seen the brothers enjoying it. That book is not appropriate reading for Benedictine monks. A baby is sold to pirates, raised a servant, then lives a life of adventures, wooing princesses and fighting in tournaments. You forget the best part. In the end, Gorin learns he has royal blood, the son of a duke. He reigns as a king and dies as a pious hermit. What's not to love? Benedictines should be dreaming of reconciliation with our lord, not lusty adventures. What's the harm? Redemption will still be waiting for them when they put down the book. Yeah, let's go with that. Yes, always, but they still must choose redemption. Should we go on sinning so grace will increase? Of course not. Fantasy leads to temptation. Temptation has led to the downfall of many men and women. Sometimes, yes. But books like this, it's all the same type of fantasy, isn't it? To die better than we were born. And what's the problem with that? Why shouldn't a peasant dream of being a king? There is neither Jew nor Greek, neither slave nor free, neither male nor female, for you are all one in, Jesus, in Christ Jesus. Paul's words can be hard to recall when you're suffering because of your station in life, and yet Paul says that women must obey men. Even the Gospels can't free us from the bondage of our place in life. Uh, we may be one in Christ, but we are not equal in this world. I feel like this is the best answer. Like, I feel like this is the worldly answer that I'd like to give, but seeing that we have a theological background, this might resonate more with, uh, with Illuminata. That is exactly when his words are most needed. But, the book, Andreas, we must return it. Or would you like the abbot to receive a fourth letter? I understand. I'd hate to loan a book and never get it back. It would be like losing a limb. Uh, I hate to see the brothers disappointed, but I understand. Well, perhaps a small limb. Or my little finger. Regardless of the size and importance of the body part in question, I understand and appreciate it. It's not my goal to deprive the brothers of their joy, but to return Amadeo Rusco's property. The book, please. Alright. There is only one book left, then you will be freed from bondage. A dark red cover, 8 inches high, 5 inches across, 2 inches thick. Uh, I believe Brother Guy was reading it? Well, what is it? The description should be sufficient. Uh, I don't know why you won't tell me, but alright, I'll find it. Was it something... salacious? Now that I think about it, Gui has always been guarded about this book like he was hiding it. Amor de... Dici? Uh, very good. Please bring it here. What is this, anyway? Hmm, maybe I should have learned French at some point. Oh, of course, because it's in French, and we specialized in Italian and Greek. What is this? Uh, me touche par deu et... I'm sorry, God, my French isn't up to scratch. Why are you asking so many questions? Just give it to me. Why won't you tell me what this book is? I'm sorry, but I just love books too much to let this go without knowing what it is. I haven't asked so many questions. I've asked one question twice, and you haven't answered me. She's not gonna... Like, we can't logic her a question out of her, but... Do we appeal to her sense of books? 
Let's do that. Curiosity, curiosity can be a dangerous thing, Andreas, especially in a place like this. Three French bishops condemned the book. All copies were to be burned. Its authors shared the same fate. What? Why? I don't know, Andreas. It isn't my place to question the judgment of one bishop, much less three. And before you ask, no, I haven't read it, but I know it contains a dialogue between love and reason. Okay, well, there's not going to be anything about love and reason in here, is there? So the book is dangerous. When did the bishops condemn it? Two hundred years ago. What? Why? Why is it still here? Because Father Matthias loves books, all books. He didn't want to see it destroyed. Sounds reckless. He was right to do so. Books shouldn't be destroyed, even if their contents is in question. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with him. The Holy Church does not share your opinion. It is their law we must contend with, not your emotions. The Church was wrong. Fume si uh, uh, let's fume silently. It's not my place to question the former abbot's decision. But when Father Gerano learned it was in our position, he wanted to destroy it. How did Father Gerano even know the book was here? Uh, must the book be destroyed? Well, I refuse to give it to you if you... How did he know it was here? Mother Cecilia made a note of it in the inventory when she was, in the, li when she was the librarian. Must the book be destroyed? No one even knows it's here. Uh... I do. So do Mother Cecilia and Father Gerno. Well, I refuse to give it to you if all you're going to do is destroy it. Should we push back? I mean, I, I can't... I'm, I'm not having this. I can't have... What? Why not? What are you going to do with it? I'm not sure. I'll hide it. Keep it safe. Read it and become a French heretic. Give me that book, or our deal is forfeit. I won't tell you anything about Baron Rothvogel. Consider the, thousand, uh, consider the sound, sound theological reasons for allowing this book to exist. I appeal to your duty as a librarian of this abbey to not destroy this book. I propose a compromise. I will take the book from the abbey, far away. What do you think? I mean, maybe this. I'll be gone by the time Father Geno asks about it, and if you like, you can say I stole it. I doubt he'll make a fuss about me stealing a book he wanted destroyed. I don't like this, Andrea. It feels wrong in my heart. I'll s I swear I'll take it far away. It's been out here for h years, and besides, how would you have stopped me? Persuade Illuminata. So, uh, logician background. What does this mean? Logician background, three, offered to help Illuminata enthusiastically, five. Oh, okay, so those are the things that I'm trusting you to, I'm trusting you in this, Andreas, against my better judgment. Don't make me regret this. Of course, so all of the little decisions we've been making so far that, that the players, that, that we've uh, received a little notification saying this has been remembered, they kind of contribute to whether or not we can succeed in uh, basically a kind of a tough decision like this here. So this is good. We've got the forbidden book. It wasn't destroyed. We convinced the Illuminata to give us the to give it to us instead of destroying it, so um Now then, Baron Rothvogel, quickly though, I need to finish up here soon. Uh you said that he buys books from the Abbey, what kinds? How long has he visited the Abbey? He seemed unusually friendly with me. I don't understand it, honestly. Mentioned find a copy of Historia Tassi. Said it has some scandalous details in it. Uh, why? Are you angling to get the Baron as a patron someday? We share a common love. I want to know if the particulars uh, are as similar as the gen as the generality. But I'm not sure. I suppose I'm just curious. There's no shortage of books. Let's uh, go with our knowledge of books. You seem to love all books, Andreas. Baron Rothfogel's tastes are not as broad. He collects books with admirable artistic qualities or on subjects he seems to have a fascination with. I can't speak on his taste in art, but I have noticed a tendency in, his, in the subjects that attract him. The Baron has a particular interest in books on magic and other occult topics. Knew it. 
I knew it. As does our prior, though I suspect the Baron's interests may be more experimental than academic. A dangerous error in judgment? Is that normal? There is much to learn from texts on astrology and theology, even new ne necromancy, but reading is not practice. I'll assume that your interests go no further than what's on the written page. Faith can inure uh, get anyone against corrupting ideas, but reading such texts is dangerous. Not that it is my place to judge either the prior or the baron, of course. Hmm. You seem to say that often, af after judging people, uh, let's, if you say so. I, I understand that it is a flaw that I must correct. Well, I must be off to Mass. Thank you again for your help, Andreas. I suppose you'll be leaving via the crypt? Smile devilishly? Let's smile devilishly. What are you smiling about? I suppose you'll be leaving via the crypt? I'm filled with the joy of books. What? Oh, just a little secret? Uh... I suppose you'll be... What? Well, uh, let's go with this. I don't know why you are poking around down there like a grave robber, but that entrance isn't for you. Oh, of course, this was the secret entrance that we found. One of the lords of the old keep must have had it built to escape in times of siege. It allows the sisters to access the library without distracting the brothers. Please do not abuse this knowledge. Of course not, sister. Maybe I could abuse it a little. <laughs> now let's let's be courteous. Thank you. I appreciate your discretion. Good day, Andreas. God be with you. All right. Well, that was productive. Sext. Eat. That's the bell for sex. The brothers will be sitting down for dinner soon. I should see if Otto is around and still wants to eat with me. I think he's working with the guest house below the abbey. Dinner with Otto and Endris. Alright, let us look at our journal. Um, so, we need to get across ta Gerdner's taxes. I uh, managed to convince Brother Mer Um, I should get the money to Clara. Okay, we can do that, that's fine. A few more pages. Uh, Clara kindly gave him some food for dinner. I should see if Otto and Endris are around. Otto's working below the abbey, between the guest house and the abbot's house. All right, well, yeah, maybe let's go down to the abbey then. Let's just make sure that there's nothing else here. Old Bailey. Hmm, I wonder what Prior Ferenc was doing with this book. Let's take a look, shall we? From the library of the University of Five Churches, the Hungarians call it Pex. Hmm, that's where Ferenc is from. Doctor of Theology, Georg of Gran. A friend of his? Did Ferenc steal this? Hmm. Ah, the Speculum Astronomi, Albertus Magnus, Defense of Astrology. Sloppy book hand. Couldn't have been produced by an abbey of note. Bastard script, Burgundian, Flemish. Not from here, not recently. Oh, I see. So we're using our knowledge of books and bookmanship to, uh, to kind of glean something about this. That's definitely Ferenc's handwriting between the lines and in the margins. Is he noting the text for the University of Pex? Uh, they know the text for the benefit of future readers? For personal use? Why would he be... For the university? He wouldn't be doing it for the university. For personal use? For the benefit of future readers? Maybe? In any case, it's a thorough con commentary. What's this? It looks scribbled. Not like Ferenc to be so sloppy, and he didn't even blot the ink dry. Libra, Capricorn, Aries, all astrological symbols. What's written below? 
Greek, to be sure. Uh, Os... Oskuketa? Should I know that? Let's see. It doesn't make any sense. That's not even a word. That's just a jumble of letters. This must be some kind of cipher. What's the key? I suppose I'll figure it out in due time, but I'll copy this all down to reference later. Hmm. Okay, well, we'll go find Otto and uh, Endris in a moment, but I think we'll take a quick break here, guys. And when we get back, we will, uh, yeah, go and have some dinner. But I think this has been a good start for now. That's all for now. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.